Hello, welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the Epson XP5100. It may also be the same for some other variant models. So some of you may have already seen a, a different version of this one. It's now been deleted. We had to make some design gene changes to the the way it was fitted just to make it more reliable. Uh, this is another copy of that video, but it's slightly different, of course. Right, so I've got the print head in the ink cartridge change position. First thing I'm gonna do, unplug the printer. The reason for that is that while it's plugged in, the print head is, is generally locked into position and we will need to be able to move it during the install. So that's quite important that you unplug the printer. Right, so I've already filled and primed the continuous ink system. There will be a separate video uh, video link on your paper which shows you how to do that. Now, it must I must stress, it must be filled and primed before fitting into the printer. Some customers fill it, fill the, the system and then place it on the shelf above uh, after fitting and all that will happen is the ink will just drain into the bottom of your printer. So that's one thing you mustn't do. The second one that generally tends to happen is they put the ink in the reservoir and then don't prime it so the ink lines are empty. They will then run multiple head cleans to try and pull it down the line. That will potentially overheat and burn your print head out. So you must fill and prime it. Prime it is, is removing the air from the continuous ink system so you're basically pulling it down the line and filling the cartridge. Uh, I can't stress enough, it must be done prior to install. So I'm going to pop, pop these into the printer. Click them into place. Within you, and I'm going to slide it over here out of the way. Within your accessory pack, you have some clips which look like this. We'll remove the backing tape. I'm going to put one here in the middle, and then one over here on the right hand side, which I'll flip the print around to show you. I'm going to route the incline. There's an old one on here from before, that won't be on yours. Going to route the incline through now you can see here it's quite important this that i've got a nice straight loop over from the ink cartridge you mustn't fit it like this so it's all tangled the, the incline will not flow well and it'll get jammed so nice straight loop coming off into the clip close the clip into the side the side one let's spin it around so you can see in here so i probably could to be honest probably do with moving that over slightly and again, just around here. And again, you can see I've got a bit of a twist here that would that would drive me bonkers. So while they're all they're in, or don't get it like that in the first place, just take that twist out. I'm going to leave it in for now. But the clips here at the side. Right, slide the print head all the way over to the left hand side, and you can see here straight away we've got all this excess incline. We need to get rid of that. So just hold, pull. The incline and it should be a little bit taut. See this loop here? A little bit taut coming off here. Slide back over to the right, all the way over to the right, all the way over to the left. No snagging, no twisting, no kinking. Pull that excess through there, and then that's that part done. For the lid sensor, I'll come to the lid sensor in a minute actually. So before I switch the printer on, this again, this is this one here. I can't stress enough. It's the number one concern that we get for customers. They don't remove the small flat plugs and fit the air filters. If you don't do that, you can ruin the print head it, it, and try and print with it. It can cause it to, the print head to overheat as it's trying to pull ink. It can't pull ink down because the plugs are fitted. So I can't stress enough. You must remove the small flat plugs. They're to be replaced by these little air filters which look like child spinning tops if you can remember them. They'll be inserted with the narrow pointed end facing upwards. Now once that's done, now I'm going to turn the printer on. So the reason I didn't turn the printer on first was because it may start to initialize and start to pump ink down the line. It can't pump ink down the line if these aren't fitted. So now I'm going to plug it in. Switch the printer on. Wait. 
while it's while it's initialization initializing you, you may get a, a warning from the printer just saying you're using non-genuine inks you just accept that warning you know you're not using non-genuine inks lid sensor little clip which looks like this remove the green tape from it can be a bit fiddly if you don't have any nails like me goes on this point here press it down firmly and that is just to keep the lid slightly ajar to allow room for the incline to move freely while the lid is closed you can still use all the functionality of the printer it's just to keep it slightly ajar right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run some head cleans and nozzle checks on it which can which you will more than likely have to do run up to anywhere from three or four head cleans or nozzle checks on the first time one then what I'm going to do is I'm going to force the chip to run out of ink so I can show you how to reset the cartridge right so it's saying it cannot recognize the ink cartridge select next to clear the error so let's have a look next okay dismiss right they're going to come over to the middle just make sure that I've got them all in the right slots black sign magenta yellow I do so I'm going to unclip it clip it back in and the cyan and the magenta and the yellow and then press completed Yeah, so it looks like you're using non-genuine ink. So the black is actually just about to run out of ink because I've, I've used it before. And when you take the chips out, the cartridge out, it won't reset until it's got to 100% empty. So if you take it out when it's half full and put it back in, it would still read half full. So it says OK. Yes, I'm using non-genuine ink. Continue. Yes. Placement complete. And we're finished. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to run some nozzle checks and cleans to basically force it to run out of ink so I can show you how to reset the cartridge. So what I'm doing now is I'm copying a document underneath the scanner lid to try and force it to run out of ink so I can show you how to reset the cartridge. So it's just a cyan document, 100% coverage that I've got under the lid to try and force it to use it. The, or the ink up. So for the continuous ink system you can see I've got it sat level on the right hand side of the printer. You can fit it on the left hand side in front and the back any position you want as long as from this clip onwards around to the cartridges that bit is the same. Everything else it doesn't really matter that's the key point on this one. The three things that customers normally do wrong for our number one support is the continuous ink system not at the same level as the base of the printer which could flood it. The air filters are not fitted and they're not filled and primed before installing so those three things should be done. So when it thinks it's run out of ink it was the cartridge the printer's going to stop and it's going to say it's not recognized that's perfectly normal. You can't reset if you've got a big, a big print job coming up and you know once nearly empty you can't force an early reset on on any of the continuous ink systems that we've ever done you have to wait until it reaches zero percent it has to go through that process only then will you be able to reset so it may be that you've got the two are nearly low and you you print 10 documents off and one runs out and that resets and then another 10 documents the other one runs out there's no way around that yeah you can't reset them all in one go and you, you can't reset them early that's pretty normal. So it's probably going to take a couple of a couple of documents or at least a head clean. So I'm just going to run one document and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a head clean because I know head head cleaning consumes uh, a fair amount of ink. And what I want to do is I want it to force itself just so I can. So I've cancelled that document because it I was I thought it was going to run out halfway through. So now I'm going to do a head clean instead, which I know will force it to do.
Right, okay. Over on to maintenance. Maintenance. Print head cleaning. Start. Says it takes about three minutes. It probably take about two minutes normally. Doesn't normally take that long. But I know if it runs out of ink halfway through a head clean, it's the same procedure. I will have to reset it, which is what you want. You guys want to see. Fingers crossed. One head clean will be enough. Right, so it's it's done it's done what I hoped it would. Cyan cartridge has run out of ink, it says it's not recognised, that's normal. So I'm gonna press next. It's gonna come over to the middle. To reset it, you just basically briefly unclip. They're not even lifting it, see all I've done is break the contact and then I'm gonna clip it back in and that's it, it's reset. Press completed. You don't need to take it out at all. And that's it to reset itself. So it will then carry on as normal through initialization charge, thinking it's got a new cartridge. That's perfectly normal. And then it will continue to print or whatever it was doing last time. Yeah, so it's actually finished. So, And that's it. That's how you install the continuous ink system on the... Epson XP5100 and the XP5105 from City Ink Express. So I'll just let it finish this one document with the lid closed just so you can see that. So it's still going through its initialization and charge from thinking it had a new cartridge. So I just have to bear with it a minute now I've, now I've said it normally takes like about a minute or so to do that. Say a minute always feels like forever when I'm doing these videos. When you're sitting there waiting. Sure, that must be a minute by now. I know it's perfectly normal, I know that. And basically it was just a nozzle check. And that's how you install the continuous ink system from City Ink Express on the XP5100. Thanks for watching.